you get that? The fire game ain't easy, you know what I mean? You're out there every day trying to share your, your skills, you know, trying to share yourself with people who do not really appreciate how difficult it is. But all that's gonna change soon. I'm working on something new, something big. What I'm working on, <laughs> man, I'm finally gonna get my name in the record books. <laughs> it's gonna change everything for me. I'm telling you, I feel like a kid, I'm so excited. I grew up in Patterson, New Jersey. My pops, he, he worked the silk mills, making uh, parachutes during World War II. The biggest problem is the smell of lighter fluid. No, I mean it. I, I consume so much of it, I absolutely reek of it. Ah, oh, Jesus. It smelled awful. All that fire. He would do 10 shows a day if he could. Just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, B.O., that's one thing, but that lighter fluid stench, ugh. He wanted me to give up smoking. Can you believe that? He's drinking goddamn lighter fluid, and I gotta give up smoking. Everybody performs here. Throdini, Rocco, Chris McDaniel, Todd Robbins. Tony even performed here for a while. Last time he was in, he was on fire. Literally, he set himself on fire which is exactly why we no longer allow him to perform here anymore. Oh, and when I was a kid, they called me like, you know, a pyromaniac. But I wasn't one of those guys blowing up mailboxes and doing that foolishness. I respected fire. I figured out real early, if you don't respect fire, fire don't respect you. Now, I got interested because I grew up reading Ripley's Believe It or Not, Guinness Book of World Records. Hey, those amazing guys. I want to get my name in those books. People have really become jaded. They don't appreciate the skill, the time it takes. I have people telling me, it's fake fire. What the hell is fake fire? That's usually when people applaud. No, you're too kind, really. You know, it's funny. I just shoved a sword down my throat, and you people didn't even think twice about it. You know, Tony's right. Audiences are so used to seeing shocking images that a performer has to really push the boundaries just to make an impression anymore. I understand why Tony has always felt, well, pressure to top himself. But, but that's Tony. He never does anything halfway, and you got to respect him for that. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've got a very special guest with us uh, with us today in studio, who, by the way, is stinking up the entire studio with the smell of lighter fluid. Now, uh, this is uh, world famous fire breather Tony Volcano Valenci. Now, should I be calling you Tony or Volcano? Well, call me anything you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> By the way, I always like to tell my listeners a little bit about what uh, my guest looks like. Now, who would you say that you look like? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Tom Jones? Tony Orlando? Much like Tony Orlando, I should point out that Tony Valencia also has a creepy kid toucher mustache. And he also has uh, an incredible Tony Danza joke shop wig that he's wearing. Did you lose your real hair in a horrid fire? Oh, no, this is my hair. I don't believe it for one second. Okay, so you have some sort of big news that you wanted to share with us. Please go right ahead. What's this big news? Thanks, Steve. Yes, after decades of trying to set a world's record, I am here to announce my latest feat. Wow, are you hearing this, folks? Right here, live on the air. You're hearing it here first. Go ahead, Tony. Thanks, Steve. Uh, in one month's time, I'm going to attempt to set the record for the highest flame ever blown. What height are you going to be going for? 10,000 feet. What? In one month's time, I'm going to attempt to be the first person to blow fire while skydiving. Establishing a rigid training ritual is the only way to prepare for a stunt like this. You gotta want it so bad you're willing to eat fire for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Good. Oh my 
God, I know Tony from the beginning, right after he got to New York. I never, ever knew anybody like him. You know a dreamer, he always has big plans. But you know what? He's also got a competitive side. So, uh, you seen anybody? Huh? Yeah. You ever been with an Italian? Don't knock it till you tried it, you know what they say. I'm all done with us, Lux. All righty. My first record attempt. OK, that would have been back in 1982. I attempted to drink 100 cans of lighter fluid and blow 300 fireballs. I even got press coverage for that. But after, you know, 100 fireballs or so, I started puking. But, you know, he'd never done that many fireballs in a row before, so what do you expect? He moped around for weeks after that. And let me tell you, he was not the easiest guy to live with when he felt good. I believe his next attempt at the world record was a stunt he called the human hot air balloon. Uh, if I remember correctly, he only got a few feet off the ground, so it didn't count. My name is Tony Volcano Valenci, and I am about to attempt the underwater fireball. I really should have thought that one through a little bit more. Then he was working on one called the Human Volcano. He got the idea for the Human Volcano after helping Tony Jr. with a science fair project. It was awful. I got disqualified for almost burning down the school. I have very few memories of my father not in a leotard. Tony and I have been close for maybe 20, 25 years now. He's a real character. He would do anything to please an audience, and that can be dangerous in our line of work. He was obsessed with trying to blow the highest fireball on record. I kept telling him, Tony, it's too dangerous. If you don't mind, I, could I eat my lunch while we do this? Thank you. Bon appetit. <laughs> Speaking as a fire eater, the height record is the most difficult. You, see, you need to blow fire straight up, which can lead to the possibility of a blowback. The record for the highest flame currently belongs to a guy named Antonio Restivo, that's right. 26 feet, five inches, I think. Tony, he never had a chance. I don't know, he must have been nervous or something, because he totally lost his concentration. He, he committed the cardinal sin of fire eating. One thing you're never supposed to do, he had a torch in one hand and the fuel in the other. Now, every fire eater knows you put the fuel down before you do the fuel. It was the worst thing that could have happened. So he doesn't break the record, who cares? He got burned pretty bad. A disaster. It wasn't missing the record that bothered me. It was such a stupid mistake. I think he gave up trying for the world's record after that, which is a shame, because if anyone deserves that kind of recognition, it's Tony. I used to book 10 gigs a week easy. Those were great days. I mean, I was doing Coney, bar mitzvahs, quinceaneras, graduation parties, even a few bachelorette parties, if you know what I mean. Me and Tony Jr., we want him for nothing. We even bought a house in Staten Island. No mortgage, nothing. Just flat out paid cash for it. All on account of him eating fire. He even bought me a dance studio to start teaching classes at. I teach, well, some people call it exotic dancing, but I found that can have negative connotations, so I just say pole dancing. Come on in, come. So, so 
far, we've had like six car wrecks outside. You know, drivers getting distracted looking in the window. So the mayor, he made us put up blinds. Yeah. So this is where I set my own personal world record. I bet Tony didn't tell you that. I set the world record for holding the angel pose the longest. Oh, see, it sounds easy, right? But I couldn't walk for days after that. Anyway, me setting the world record before Tony, that nearly killed him. I buy her a fucking dance studio, and she goes and beats me to a world record. She never took my stunts seriously. All she ever saw me for was a guy putting himself in harm's way, setting a bad example for Tony Jr. But even back then, even when I was so busy, always, in the back of my mind, I wanted to find a way to set a world record. I'm Tyler Hollinger. Colin Smith. This, we're, fly and we're Fly Guys. Fly Guys. With a Z. You're not wearing your shirt. Yeah. This is a cool shirt. We're Fly Guys. And this is, um, this is our office. It's also my father's garage. Tony reached out to us a couple months ago with the idea, and we loved it. I mean, it's great. What's greater than combining one epic stunt with another epic stunt? And then number three is always Let's pull the right. right. Well, which is it? We're, we're professionals. You should know that between us, we've done somewhere between 600 and 2,000 jumps. Yeah. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna simulate um, the jump. Uh, yeah. I'll be the pilot. Is it a right, so, okay, so he, okay. And then you're here. Okay. Here we are, yeah. Okay. Right. If right. you're gonna uh, jump, you gotta jump now! Right, why, why do we have to jump? We're running out of gas! Right. Okay, so we gotta we're go. We're just gonna, you're just gonna pivot mm. out the door. Out the door. Yeah, that's it. And now you're falling. And now you're falling. Now you're skydiving. And look, here he is. He's a bird, though. And if you see a bird, hands behind your back and you plummet. And then up. Yeah, yeah, if you see a bird, yeah. Because you don't know what he's, you don't know what a bird's gonna do. Ever, yeah, ever. Yeah, good point. Right? Yeah. Have you ever seen a bird and go, I know what that bird's gonna do. Uh -huh. go, 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 hands behind your back. Okay, sorry. That's how quick it happens. Go, go hands behind back. Or if he's coming below us. Go! And this is called a turtle. You're riding a horse, you're hugging a bear. Now it's important when you jump out of the plane to have your arms out. Okay. Okay, so not, not like this. Out, out like that. Okay. You want to create like as this? much drag as possible. Okay. Yeah, arch your back a little bit. Arch your back a little bit. Oh, with your hips. Now, now you have that. He's... lighter fluid, lighter fluid and torch, right? right? And then. Oh, I got his call. Call. Keep going. Who? Okay. Wait, so I that? got the lighter fluid and I got the torch. No, I know it's because well, he um, the, the other day right, we whatever, were, when we'll we were playing it. beer pong. So you got the lighter fluid. I, uh, we oh, also set the world record for first pair of socks knit while skydiving. Crocheted. Uh, first pair of socks crocheted while skydiving. Right. I mean, I thought the hardest part about it, the whole thing was gonna actually be, you know, getting it done in time. It was just actually learning to crochet. Yeah, to learn how to crochet isn't the easiest thing that I've ever done. It took about a year and a, it took us about a year and a half. It was hard. Before was really being hard. able to crochet a sock as, in midair as a skill. And also the video has like a, a million hits on YouTube, so that's mm -hmm. bonus. Go ahead and look that up. I'll go ahead and say, no offense to crochet, it's very cool, but I think fire breathing is a bit more exciting. And so if we could help Tony set the record, um, then you know that would be epic for not only our business, but for also for, it would be, it would be epic for Tony yeah. and then for our business. Well, well if the wind's coming, and then I hit her. Yeah, then the fire's gonna blow into my face, I'll get burned. It was upset, so. Hey, Colin. Make out with her then. Yeah, what's up? I think we got a problem here. Uh-huh, what, what? Because I'm giving kind a parachute important. lesson. I'm giving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, Tony Volcano. Yeah, he's okay. Because if he's, if he's sky, if he's skydiving and he blows the flames, it's just gonna come back in his face. Let me try that, let me simulate it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's gonna. Are you okay with that, or do you want to? No, I don't want that. That's okay. bad. I've had, I've had that happen. It's not good. So I believe the question is, have we told our insurance company about the stunt? And I will tell you that we had a that we, I know, I know that we had a business meeting here with each other, uh, and at the end of the meeting, we 
We're not going to tell them. No, we're going to tell them afterwards. We're going to tell them afterwards. Uh, like after we've already done it. Because, you know, and then it's going to, we're set the record, so what are they going to do? Arrest us, you know? No. I mean, it's better to ask for forgiveness before and then permission later. That's not right. Now, if you're just joining us, we're here. I have a very special guest in studio. Uh, he just announced before we went to break that he's going to jump out of an airplane and try to blow an incredible fireball. Uh, now, from what I understand, I think that we actually have some callers coming through oh, okay. that actually apparently are somewhat interested in what you're doing. I don't know why. And they want to talk to you. They want to tell you how stupid you are. The first There's a lot of negativity to deal with. Since I made the announcement on the radio, I've been getting a lot of really hateful phone calls. I stopped answering the phone altogether, because when I do, all I hear is, well, why don't you listen for yourself? Hey, I got a question, you dumb piece of shit. Why don't you go and jump off a bridge instead, you fucking flaming douche nozzle? You know, if, the, if, the, if this fucking jump doesn't kill you, I want to get over there and fucking kill you myself, you shit-eating fire. What are you going to do? Volcano, let me hear you roar. Oh my god! Hey. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Is that uh, real? I brought the tools, uh, Tony, and then flip it around. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. go hey, set now. world oh, record. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, you guys in your Red Bull. I'll tell you, I'll stick to lighter fluid if, if I gotta drink so that. Don't talk about lighter fluid. Oh, anymore. okay. Have you, Tony? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, guys. Don't do that. Don't stop it. Let, let me in. I'll go around. I have to admit, if Tony can pull this one off, yep. nobody but nobody will be able to touch him. Not even me. It sounded crazy to me, and I throw knives around people. But Tony said he'd worked out a way to do it. Here I come, here I come. There you go. Yeah. Two blow! Three yeah. blow! Four blow! Four blow! You knew about this and you're letting him go through with it? Somebody's got to stop him. He's already at the airport right now. Shit. Give me a phone. Give me a phone. You ready? Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. This is it. This is it. I'm definitely going to No, I'm at it. Give, give me the phone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Todd. Tony. Uh, Tony, can Todd, you, can how you doing? Tony, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can't hear you, man. Look the plane. Yeah, I, I no. can't hear you. Tony. Tony, you can't do this. I know. I can't believe I'm doing it either. So, uh, you know, look, they're waiting for me. No, I'm Tony. taking off. I got to go. Bye. I got to stop him. Perfect day. I mean, the conditions were amazing. You couldn't have asked for a better day for the jump, really. And um, and we were with Tony through all of his training. Everything was going really perfectly in the plane. Tony was really calm, super focused, like really just like at, at one with all of us. the torch in the plane and it was like soaked with lighter fluid so the wind wouldn't put it out.
And then, you know, by the time the pilot asked him what he was doing with torches and lighter fluid in the plane, he was just already gone. Son of a bitch, Tony did it. He came out of the plane in right. seated position, looked up to the sky, Here did we his were. first blowout. Yeah, we were right above him. We were right above him. Circling, filming, filming, circling. Saw the whole thing. And then he opened his chute, and I thought he was home free. Chute opens, record's been set, and, uh, and then he did a blowout. Another one. Another one. After the chute had opened. Which we had not advised. Then he started blowing again. The chute went up in flames. Everything ignited, he spilled the lighter fluid, and down he went. The chute just f***ing melted. too late and you know the the really sad part is I was wrong he would have been fine if he didn't get overzealous and tried those blowouts with this parachute open it already set the record I never know what he was thinking doing that he should have quit while he was ahead he should have just been satisfied when he set the record we know now in hindsight, that he had planned this all along. Yep. I think that what he thought was that sh shoots, his shoot was made of silk, and he could have asked us, and mm -hmm. we would have said to yep. him, no, they're made of nylon now. Yeah. And nylon is flammable, and silk is not, and they haven't been made of silk since, like, World War II. Or he could have just Googled it. All things considered, it was pretty spectacular. Oh, yeah, completely. Dude, just wait a second. I think at the end of the rainbow, what you find is that Tony had a spectacular exit stage left. Oh, yeah. I mean, the guy got like a million twenty six, oh, a million twenty seven really? hits on YouTube. Dude, it was pretty epic. I mean, he went out with a bang. Actually, it was more of like a... <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's not funny. It's not funny when someone loses their life. Uh, so needless to say, we were arrested while fleeing the scene. But my dad is like a lawyer and stuff, so he got his house arrest instead of jail time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you wanna Boom! Ankle buddies! What's up with that? Look at I those got, things. I got a pager on my ankle. Don't page me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I got that enormous life insurance policy. We had him cremated, of course. He was half done anyway. It was pretty devastating. We lost one of the greats that day. Wherever you are, buddy, we're thinking of you. Oh, wait. Wherever you are, buddy, give him hell. I like to think that Tony would be pleased that he went out in a blaze of glory. Seems right. Almost like it was meant to be in some horrible, twisted, 
beautiful way. You know, I failed at a lot of things. And I've succeeded at a lot of things. Yeah, this is dangerous. There's some risk involved. This is what I do. This is my dream. This is my dream and nobody, not even myself, is going to take it from me. Not this time. When I do this and come back here, you can all kiss my butt. And if I fail, well, and I won't be around to worry about it. You know what I mean? The headline brought a tear to my eye. Tony Volcano burns the sky he knew he was destined to shine but he didn't know where to draw the line Tony was a big old man no one dare tell him what to do he went about in his own way eating fire without a lick of shame didn't stop till he went down in flames Now Tony didn't play by the rules His gall and his gut were his tools And since Tony never felt any fear He couldn't sense the reaper drawing near Tony had a reckless heart could say he wasn't brave He loved to look death in the eye Playing life as if it were a game And he didn't stop till he went down in It's a wonder how his body took abuse He was crazy as a dog on the loose He finally had to reap what he sowed Volcanoes are meant to explode Tony led a rebel's life